Here we begin a learning sequence on the interference of light. Interference, you've probably seen before. It's a fairly straightforward concept. Two sinusoids add one way in their in phase and they make a bigger sinusoid. Out of phase, they cancel. That's the basic idea. When we apply it to light, it gets really complicated. The math gets nasty, you'll see why. And then in the end, the result is just that simple idea. When the waves are in phase, the light adds. When the waves are out of phase, the light cancels. So it's gonna be a few boards of just seemingly perp meaninglessly complicated junk just to get to that. But I think maybe along the way, you'll see why it happens. So let's ask ourselves what happens when two plane waves overlap. Right? So a plane wave coming this way, plane wave going that way, they overlap, what do they do? So let's draw them real quick first. So say we're gonna be anywhere in space, X and Y, and Z for that matter, we don't really care. And one plane wave is going one way with a K vector, and here I'll draw just to remind you that it's a plane wave. And then another plane wave, K2, is going like that. What's gonna happen when they overlap? Of course, they're always overlapping because they're infinite plane waves, but let's just imagine they're going to crash. So what happens when two plane waves overlap? Well, they are solutions to a linear differential or a linear wave equation, so the answer is superposition. The sum of the two solutions, the sum of the two plane waves is also a solution. So we're gonna mathematically now just add two plane waves is really all we're gonna do, but let's make some assumptions. We don't wanna do this completely general, just to keep it from being ridiculous. Let's do the E field only. Let's assume the B field will just follow along whatever the E field does. Let's do the same frequency. Same omega. Beats sound kind of fun, but beats at optical frequencies are a little bit hard to watch. Let's do the same wave number. Of course, if they're in the same medium and they have the same frequency, they have the same speed of light, they're going to have the same wave number. But let's do different wave vector. And that just means they have the same wavelength, same wave number, they're just going in different directions. Right? Same magnitude of those two k's, just different directions. All right, different wave vector means they can be in any direction. Okay, so if we assume all that, we can write E1 and E2. So E1, give it some E01 vector amplitude. Okay, so that's the little vectors here. And as soon as you define E naught one, you say the polarization, technically you're saying which way the vector, the E field vector points. And we're letting it point in any direction. This isn't even confined really to two dimensions. And then I'm gonna shock you and write a cosine. We're not gonna do this with complex exponentials because to get through this requires quite a bit of trig identities. So sometimes it's actually better to use sinusoids. And then I'm gonna write K1 dot R. So since we're doing it with Rs, that means it's really good for any direction in three dimensions. Minus omega t, and then maybe it has some phase, epsilon one. Right? Some phase, we don't know where the origin is. Right? And then we can write E2. E2 equals E naught two, without all the discussion, cosine K2 dot R minus the same omega t, and it could have some phase, epsilon two. All right, so if we do superposition, what does that mean? That means that the field we get is just the sum of the two. This is what we're looking for. E sum is E1 plus E2. How bad could it be? You'll find out. <laughs>